we're still relatively fresh into 2024, but what a fantastic year for gaming it's been so far. And with plenty of phenomenal Xbox games to get your hands on, we decided that you'd like to know what the best Xbox games of the year are, at least so far. So if you enjoy this tri-monthly recap, then maybe we'll keep this going throughout the year. Be sure to let us know. Alrighty then, I'm Craig of Pure Xbox, and how about we dive right into things? Here are the best Xbox games of 2024 so far. First up, we have Brothers A Tale of Two Sons Remake. Following the journey of two young boys, one older than the other, who must embark on a fantastical adventure fraught with peril if they hope to save their sickly father. What's unique about this game in particular is its control scheme, having both brothers move independently of one another using retrospective analog sticks, which in turn challenges our coordination throughout this relatively short journey. Originally released for the Xbox 360 back in 2013, this remake doesn't exactly offer more if we're talking narrative editions, but it does repackage the iconic tale for the modern gamer. So if for whatever reason you missed out in 2013, you've now got a gorgeous puzzle platformer to crack on with. Rolling into ninth spot, we have the twin stick top shooter, Go Mecha Ball. This charming Game Pass Day 1 release flew under the radar for a lot of people, but the general idea here is that you roll around each level, bumping into, shooting, and using collected abilities to annihilate increasingly difficult waves of enemies, as well as the odd big boss battle. The controls here are slick, responsive, and good fun. It's a bright and colorful game, and not to mention the sound design actually slaps. Now, I'll be the first to say I didn't have Go Mecha Ball on my top 10 games in 2024 bingo card, but it's definitely one worth checking out, especially if you're a Game Pass subscriber. Living it up in 8th place is the gripping paranormal narrative adventure, Banishes Ghosts of New Eden. This one tells the tale of a pair of love-struck ghost hunters called to a small town in 17th century New England to investigate a rather old and spooky curse. Unfortunately, the job proves deadly when Antea is killed mere minutes into the game, leaving her partner Red all alone. However, this is a game about ghosts, so of course Antea returns in phantasmal form to assist Red from the spectral plane. This is where things get tricky for Red and Antea, considering a banisher's job is to literally banish the dead without hesitation. Will you choose to live and die by your code, or say bosh to the code and opt for love instead? It's pulling on these heartstrings that makes this such a remarkably gripping story. I hardly want to let you go. I know, but you must. Taking 7th position is the flashy fighter Tekken 8. Featuring the return of plenty of old faces as well as a few impressive new additions, <coughs> Reyna is a queen, the roster on offer here is pretty badass. The campaign is packed full of over-the-top fisticuffs as well as plenty of daddy issues, and you want to know the solution to said parental problem? Punch him in the face for an hour whilst falling to Earth on a massive asteroid. The real solutions to family drama. Anyway, Tekken 8 also comes with an impressive ghost AI feature which learns how each and every one of us fights with authentic detail. From here, we can test our might against friends as ghosts or really push our limits against Tekken professionals. You can, of course, but that's if you fancy a really good humbling. Trapped and sealed into sixth spot is the time-bending action platformer Prince of Persia The Lost Crown. Favoring a return to the side-scrolling Metroidvania gameplay loop, The Lost Crown follows the story of a promising young warrior called Sargon as he traverses the cursed Mount Karth in an effort to save the prince. The movement is slick and free-flowing, the combat is dynamic and honestly a wee bit hard. The characters are all well realized and the narrative is presented in a decent way, blocking off areas of the map until abilities have been unlocked enabling you to traverse there. Prince of Persia The Lost Crown managed to pretty much nail what it set out to achieve while simultaneously providing the franchise with a much needed refresh in direction. Number 5 on the board belongs to the strategic JRPG Unicorn Overlord. 
Vanillaware continue their reputation of developing gorgeous anime adventures with this particular one telling the tale of Elaine, a young heir to the throne who flees the kingdom of Cornia when it falls siege to the despicable General Valmore. Ten years later, the young prince returns to build an army large enough to liberate the fallen kingdom from its tyrannical occupation, and the story is plenty entertaining and the voice acting is fantastic. But if I'm being honest, I didn't really vibe with the gameplay on first impression. With the combat opting for somewhat automatic battles instead of letting the player actually choose how each of their units act in direct combat. What you have here is groups of units which you can move around the battleground to strategically initiate battles. You can set rules of engagement which does somewhat give you control back but honestly give unicorn overlord some time and appreciate the game for what it actually is and it will swiftly become one of the most addictive strategy games in your xbox library you left yourself wide open fool <laughs> Fourth in our lineup today is the phenomenal Persona 3 Reload. Now, balancing your personal life with school, exams, and extracurriculars can be a tough enough job even for the average student. But if you're special enough to toss in the dark and dangerous world of shadows and personas, then you're good enough to join the Specialized Extracurricular Execution Squad, or C's for short. Persona 3 Reload is a fully realized remake of the original story with all of the bells and whistles. The goal is to infiltrate the Tower of Tartarus, an enormous maze-like structure that only appears during the dark hour, a secret extra hour that takes place just after midnight. Having not played the original Persona 3 or any of its remakes, getting to experience the game's engaging narrative with slick turn-based combat, gorgeous visuals, and a bopping soundtrack I'm so glad I waited for Persona 3 Reload and will happily recommend it as an essential 2024 must play. Come on in. Nabbing the bronze spot is the poker themed deck building roguelite Bellatro. Where do I start? Like, where do I start with this one? First of all, it's it's not poker. It really isn't poker. It's actually fun for starters because Bellatro is all about picking a deck, each with their own special abilities. For example, this one converts the standard deck of cards into two suits instead of four, whereas this one starts you off with an extra hand to play per round, or blind as they call in Bellatro. The general idea here is to use poker hands like your flush, straight, three of a kind, you get the idea, to score enough points to beat the blind score. Normally, the joker cards mean nothing, right? Well, not here. In Bellatro, jokers are the true ace up your sleeve. Joker cards each come with some really neat artwork for starters, but more importantly, point modifiers. So collecting and combining multiple jokers together help score bigger and bigger points. I'd probably need to question my life choices if I told you how many hours I've plugged into Bellatro. So instead, I'll say this. It's addictive good fun, genuinely captivating stuff when you've nailed your strategy, and is definitely worthy of the number three spot on this list. <laughs> Silver Medal belongs to the dynamic duo of Kiryu and Ichiban in the turn-based strategy JRPG Like a Dragon Infinite Wealth. Jet setting away from the gangster-infested streets of Tokyo to the sandy beaches of Hawaii, Ichiban Kasuga is back on the job, only this time he's searching for his true family. Infinite Wealth has, well, everything. The larger-than-life story is firing on all cylinders. The characters are just as wacky and lovable as they've always been. The turn-based combat has pretty much ironed out all of its kinks, and Hawaii is a refreshing change of scenery for the Yakuza franchise. It's hard not to love what Infinite Wealth is putting down. We gave it a 10 out of 10 for Pete's sake, and in our opinion, it's the best game RGG Studio has produced to date. <laughs> And our best game of 2024, so far, goes to Dragon's Dogma 2. Now, before you set your keyboard on fire with a rage comment on how frame rates exist or some questionable DLC choices, let me tell you this. I don't frankly care. Right then, Dragon's Dogma 2 is a medieval fancy epic packed full of mythical beasts, magic, and adventure lurking around every corner. 
The story follows the cycle of a chosen arisen, a somewhat immortal being with the power to control a race of humanoid creatures known as pawns. The arisen's sole purpose is to gather enough strength to inevitably battle a world dragon, this omnipotent force of creation and destruction. This was loosely the story of the original Dragon's Dogma game too, and you could kind of make a case that this sequel is more of a reboot than a true continuation from the original. The world you find yourself in is full of gorgeous vistas to explore, caves and dungeons to get stuck into, all of which are populated by some of the best enemy types which lead to some of the craziest and most epic fights going. For example, you may think that your assault on a group of orcs is manageable, and it most likely is, until a minotaur appears out of nowhere and flattens you and your companions, then just as you think you're getting a handle on your new foe, a bloody chimera shows up and really puts you through your paces. Oh, it's just incredible stuff. But speaking of companions, horns are the true stars of Dragon's Dogma 2. Pawns are these customizable AI party members that meticulously study your playstyle, learn your habits, and start implementing them in and outside of battle. You can easily forget that pawns are bots and that you are playing with real people just because of how well they fit into everything you do. Sure, the game's performance can chug from time to time, and the DLC monetizes features that you can freely do in the game without having to spend a single real-world dollar, I might add. But the point I'm getting at is, if you let yourself be immersed into the world on offer here, then you're in for one of the best RPG experiences that we've had in a good while. So there we have it. Remember, if you liked this tri-monthly format, then be sure to comment that you'd like to see more of it in the future, and we may just keep it going. Remember to check out purexbox.com for all the news out of Camp Microsoft, and subscribe to the channel here for more videos like this one. All that's left to say is bye-bye for now. Cheery bye! No! Yeah!